Last week, you may remember, we talked about the par parable of the prodigal son. Do you remember? We talked about how it's one of Jesus' most famous parables. You know, it's the one that's talked about so much. Everybody knows the term, the prodigal son. And we talked about it like, you know, in case you're not familiar with it, and that's okay, your mind is just going to be blown. Man has two sons. The younger son comes to him before the time and asks for his share of the inheritance, and he leaves the father's house. The older son stays and works with his dad. And then the younger son, he leaves and he squanders away in his inheritance. He keeps going, keeps going until it's all gone. And then one day, praise God, one day he comes to his senses and he heads home. And the Bible says, the Bible actually puts it this way, one day he came to himself. He came to himself. So one day he remembered. He left, he disconnected from his father, he went out into the world alone and the world caused him to lose everything. And in losing everything, he forgot. He talked about how the distractions of life caused him to forget everything. He forgot who he was, he forgot who he belonged to, and he forgot all that he had. And we talked about how easy it is for us to forget as well. Life has its distractions, doesn't it? Life has demands on us, puts demands on us, and that can cause us to forget that we are children of God. And God warns us about that in the scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9, we saw, But be careful, watch out, and don't forget the things you have seen. Don't forget them as long as you live, but teach them to your children and your grandchildren. You see, God knew how easy it would be for us to forget, so he warned us about it. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget you have authority. We talked about that last week. Don't forget that you have a name. Don't forget that you have access to everything I won for you on the cross. I've given it all to you. Don't forget. And you might be sitting here and you might be thinking, Angela, you're preaching to the choir. I'm here this morning. I'm not a prodigal son. I'm not a prodigal daughter. But guess what? You too can forget as we saw last week. When the younger brother returned, you remember the father, as we said, who represents our father in heaven in this parable, he accepts him back with open arms and he throws a big party and begins to celebrate. But the older brother, he didn't react like that, sure, he didn't. The one that stayed, the one that obeyed, he wasn't quite so welcoming. His arms were definitely not wide open. He was not in the mood for partying, sure he wasn't. His reaction was the opposite to the dad's. He allowed jealousy and resentment to rise up inside of him. He threw a pity me strop, remember? I stayed, I obeyed, yet this guy left. Now he's back and you're throwing a party for him. You're giving him everything. Your arms are wide open. Because you see, he too had forgotten. He was right there in the middle of it all, but he had forgotten who he was. He had forgotten what he had. In his anger and offense, he had forgotten the blessings that he had. Church, let us never forget who we are and what we have. Amen. Let us never forget the blessings we have. And I loved when we sang that song. Great choice. I am who, we, who he says I am. I, I actually closed my eyes and I didn't sing for a minute just, minute just to hear you. And you were singing. It was such a sweet sound. Let's never forget who we are. If you are a believer in Christ today, then you are God's child. And everything he has is yours. Amen. Healing, freedom, forgiveness, authority, power, access, it's all yours. Do not allow yourselves to be tricked in forgetting, into forgetting. Can I tell you today, you are always your father's child. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you say, you are always his child. Amen. Amen. And as we said last week, you know, the power, parable of the prodigal son is so powerful and it's always taught on about acceptance and forgiveness and love and compassion. And that's brilliant. That's amazing. Amen. And so it should be. But you remember we said last week, there's so much more treasure in there. As we talked about last week, the two boys, even though they were so different, one left, one stayed, they had both forgotten who they were and what they had. But can I tell you something else that comes out of this parable? Are you ready? No, 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 no. You can't just have one person ready. Lillian can't be the only one ready. Amen. You got to be ready. Are we ready for this? No, I'm telling you, this is so exciting, amen. My heart just leapt, and it has been leaping for the last few weeks. So here I am finally getting to deliver this, and you got to be excited, amen. <laughs> so to do that, we just need to have a look at part of the parable again. So Luke chapter 15. 
Okay, so the young boy goes, loses everything, comes back to his dad, right? Verse 17. But when he came to himself, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. That was never going to happen, amen? And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. But when he came to himself, one day this guy came to himself. One day he came to his senses. One day he came home. Amen. The younger son, he'd left. He'd forgotten who he was, what he had. But the Bible says he came to himself. One day he finally remembered. Church, that one day is so important. Amen. So much can happen in that one day. He's living the high life. We don't know for how long. The Bible doesn't tell us. That he loses everything and now he's living the low life. Amen. Loses everything. And he's crawling through life with nothing and no one. He's miserable. He's hungry. Probably unwashed, disheveled. He's lonely and he's lost. Amen. Then one day, one day he comes to his senses. One day he remembers. One day the light goes off. Amen. And, you know, I'm sure he's human. I'm sure he had thought about home at some stage. Of course he had. I'm sure he thought about all he had there. I'm sure he thought about his dad at some stage and his brother at some stage. He would have been thinking about it. And like he's in a field looking after pigs. He had a lot of time to think, amen. Thinking, thinking, thinking. But one day, one day the light went off. One day he said to himself, what am I doing here? My father's hired servants have more than I had. Why am I still here? And one day he heads home. And that one day changed his life forever. You see, one day he comes home. And when he does, the dad is waiting for him. And he comes running to him and he kisses him and embraces him. And, you know, he restores everything back to him. The robe, the ring, the shoes. We saw it all last week. And then on top of that, he throws a party, a lavish, expensive party. Amen. Because you see, why did he do that? The father was ready for the one day. He was ready for that one day. Because you see, then there was the older brother, but he's not quite there. He comes, he's working away, he comes in from the fields, he hears the music and dancing, he calls one of the servants, like, what's going on here? Look what it says in verse 27, and he said to him, your, the servant says to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But the, serv- but the brother was angry and refused to go in. You see, the son that stayed, the son that obeyed, he wasn't ready for his brother's return, amen? He's not re- ready for that return. Unlike the dad who was ready and waiting, the brother wasn't ready. Amen. It's almost like the younger brother's return was the furthest thing from his mind. Amen. It seems to take him by surprise. And the father's reaction, the father's open arms irritates him. He gets angry about it. He's jealous about it. Resentment rises up in him and he refuses to join the party. He refuses to celebrate. As we said, the dad here represents our dad in heaven. And you know, our father in heaven, when one of his children leaves, he waits patiently for that child to return. He's always ready, always waiting for the child to return, always expecting him, always waiting for that one day. The older brother wasn't waiting for that one day. He wasn't ready for it, amen? Seems like he wasn't even thinking about it. Church, are you ready for that one day? That one day is so important, amen? Are you ready for your brother's return? Are you ready for your sister's return? They're coming back, amen? 
they are coming back. The people that have left church for various reasons, whatever the reasons are, whether they were disillusioned, whether it's just complacency, whether they were hurt or offended, whatever it is, they are coming back, amen? One day, they too will have their come to themselves revelation, amen? And when they do, they're heading back. And we need to be ready because one day, the prodigal sons and daughters are coming through those doors, amen? I'm sorry to tell you, end of praise for them, all the time, all, uh, honestly, all the time. We've seen some of it happen already, and that makes us so excited and so happy, amen, ready to celebrate. We should be ready to celebrate when people come back to church. Yes? Why should we be ready? Because God is ready, amen? Luke chapter 15 and verse 7, just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Church, God is ready. We have to be ready. God is excited. We have to be excited. Amen? But when he came to himself, you see, one day the younger brother said, what am I doing here? I will arise and go. I will arise today. I've had enough of this life. I've had enough of this place. I want to go back. Amen? One day, those prodigals out there will say to themselves, I've had enough of this. I'm going back. Back to where I'm loved. Back to where I belong. Back to where I'm accepted. Back to where I'm constantly reminded of who I am and what I have. Amen. Church, they're coming back. One day they're going to walk through those doors. Are you not excited about this? Tough crowd, huh? <laughs> Some of them we'll know. Some of them we won't know, amen, because they won't all be from this church. They may be from other churches because people move around, as we've seen. We're all from different nationalities here in this church. So they may not be people that left this church and come back. They could come from other churches, but they're coming back. And when they come back, we need to be ready to give them the welcome they deserve, amen. We need to be just like the father in the parable. We need to be watching and waiting for their return, ready to be compassionate, ready to be loving, ready to be accepting, amen, and ready to party, amen. That one day is so important. Church, we all know prodigals, don't we? We all know people out there that are just wandering around lost. But we all know the other people that have never been in church that are wandering around there at last. No, they don't know anyone in there. They've got it all together. Any of you have got family members, neighbors, friends that you've been praying for will come to church, praying for to come to Christ? I don't know. I'm just excited on my own, but that's okay. We all have, amen. And guess what? One day is going to happen for them too. Amen. One day is going to happen for them too. Those people that you've been praying for, they will come to themselves too, amen? They will have their one day revelation. You've been praying for them and God has been prodding at them. He's been softening their hearts. He's been showing them things. They've been asking questions. They've been watching you. They've been watching how you're living your life, how you're raising your kids. They've seen the change in you. They've seen how much happier you are now. They've seen how your life has done this amazing turnaround. And they're gonna say to themselves, I need that. That's what I need. And one day they will give their lives to Christ. Amen. One day they will walk through those doors. It only takes one day. Amen. So after maybe years of praying, years of believing, years of standing in faith, I want to tell you this morning, I want to encourage you this morning, one day they're going to walk through those doors. Amen. One day they're going to say yes to Christ. Amen. It only takes one day. We see it in the Bible time and time again. One day for a healing to happen. One day for a miracle to happen. One day for freedom. To, whatever it is, one day is all it takes. And today we're talking about those lost kids out there. They're lost, amen. But it'll only take one day for them to come back. Can I show you a one day scenario, amen? Are we okay with this? Yeah. Lillian, you're still with me. Yes. <laughs> Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. What does it say? Is it up there yet? What does it say? One what is it? One day, One day at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, we're even very precise, Peter and John were on their way into the temple for prayer. 
At the same time, there was a man crippled from birth being carried up. Every day he, set, he was set down at the temple gate, the one named Beautiful, to beg from those going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter the temple, he asked for a handout. Peter, with John at his side, looked him straight in the eye and said, look here. He looked up, expecting to get something from them. Peter said, I don't have a nickel to my name, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. He grabbed him by the right hand and pulled him up. In an instant, his feet and ankles became firm. He jumped to his feet and walked. The man went into the temple with them, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. One day, one day, at three o'clock in the afternoon, if you want to be precise. <laughs> Amen. Can you just picture the scene? It must have been so amazing. Put yourself there at that time. This man, he's crippled since birth. Since birth. The man has never walked in his life. Amen. Every day he's carried to the temple to beg for money. This is his life. This is his job. This is his profession. This is his livelihood. Amen. This is what he does. Every morning he wakes up, carried to the temple. Day after day after day after day. But then one day. One day he wakes up and he's brought to the temple gate and he starts into his usual spiel. But instead of hearing coins jingling, he's being told to look here, look here. This is his one day, amen? Peter grabs his arms, pulls him up, his feet and ankles become firm, he's healed, amen? One day he receives his healing, and I love this. This is amazing. This is a miracle. This man receives his healing. He can walk. He's never been able to walk before, but I love this. Where does he go? He goes into the temple with them. Yes, he goes into the temple. This guy knew where to go, amen? He walked into the temple. How long had he sat there longing to be able to do that? Every day watching people go in and out of the temple, watching them going in to pray and longing to be able to do the same. But this was his one day, amen? He walked back and forth, the Bible says, dancing, praising God. What a blessed scene it must have been. Think about it though. Little did he know that morning when he woke up that this was his one day, amen? He was carried to the temple, but he was gonna walk home, amen? amen. One day. We don't know how long he was there, and we don't know how long it's going to take for our loved ones to come, but they're coming. Amen. Church, be encouraged. Don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. Amen. Keep believing. Keep the faith. Keep thanking God that one day, it may take weeks, it may take months, it may take years, and it may take more years, and it may take more years, but one day, God is faithful. Amen. Do not lose your faith. One day, can we just read on for a little second? Let's read verse 8 again there. So the man went into the temple with them, walking back and forth, dancing and praising God. Everybody there saw him walking around and praising God. They recognized him as the one who sat begging at the temple gate beautiful and rubbed their eyes astonished, scarcely believing what they were seeing. The man threw his arms around Peter and John ecstatic. All the people ran up to see where they were at Solomon's porch to see it for themselves. See, he comes into the temple with Peter and John, and he's walking, he's walking back and forth, he's dancing, he's praising God, he's ecstatic, amen, causing a bit of attention. And, you know, people recognize him, they're like, is that the, no, no, couldn't be, yeah, no, he's taller, no, no, he's smaller. No, it is, it is the guy that was at the gate, it is the guy that was at the gate begging. The version that we've read says they rubbed their eyes, they're astonished, they can hardly believe what they're seeing. But look what Peter says to them in verse 12. When Peter saw he had a congregation, he addressed the people. This, look, listen to this. This just leapt out to me. Oh, Israelites, why does this take you by such complete surprise? And why stare at us as if it's our power or piety that made him walk? So Peter and John, Peter is saying it wasn't us, it was God. But what I want you to see there is why does this take you by such complete surprise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is God. Peter is saying, this is what God does. This is what Jesus does. Faith in the name of Jesus has this result. Church, have faith and don't be surprised when it comes to pass. 
that person that you're believing God for salvation for, those many people that maybe you're believing God for salvation for, their one day is coming. And don't be surprised when it comes, amen? Because when you have faith, you shouldn't be astonished when your answer comes, amen? You shouldn't be in a state of hardly able to believe this is happening. Because when we pray in faith, we expect it to happen. We believe it to happen, amen? We are only taken by surprise when we don't accept, expect it. Yeah. The older brother in the parable of the lost son, he wasn't expecting it, obviously, amen? So he's surprised. He's shocked when his brother turns up. He wasn't expecting it. But the father wasn't surprised, did you notice? He was expecting it because he was ready and waiting because the Bible says he saw him from a long way off. That means he was watching out for him. So he had been praying to God to bring his lost son back. So when he prayed to God to bring his lost son back, he was believing that he was coming back because he was watching out for him. Amen. He was watching out for him. He was ready and he celebrated. You know, when our loved ones have their one day, instead of us being shocked, we need to thank God and we need to celebrate, amen. They were dead, but now they're alive. They were lost, but now they're found, amen. Amen, be encouraged. It only takes one day for your prayer to be answered, church. As I said, we see it all through the Bible. We see it all through the Bible. It's everywhere in the Bible. Genesis 1-1 says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. One day, the creation of the world began. One day, there was light. One day there was dry land and plants and fruit-bearing trees. One day there was the sun, the moon, and the stars. Amen. One day there was birds and sea creatures. One day there was animals. One day there was man. The best day there was woman. Amen. <laughs> after waiting a long time, after waiting for years and years and years, a 90-year-old woman gives birth to a son one day. Amen. One day a sea is divided. One day bread falls from the sky. One day, walls come tumbling down. One day, it's everywhere in the Bible, amen. One day, Jesus got into Peter's boat. The rest is history, amen. One day, our leper receives his healing. One day, Jesus walked by Matthew's tax collecting booth. One day, the woman with the issue of blood called to Jesus, received her healing, and he called her daughter, remember? One day, one day, Zacchaeus was sitting in a tree. One day, Jesus arrives at the pool of Bethesda. One day, a blind man's eyes are open. One day, a fish has a coin in its mouth. Amen. One day, a young boy's lunch feeds, feeds thousands. And here's my favorite. One day, a thief is on a cross and ends up in paradise. This guy on the cross to die, guys, probably, as Enda said to me during the week, spent his whole life running from God. And here he was on his deathbed, if you like. What does he do? One day, turns to Jesus. One day, one day, one day our debt was paid in full, amen. One day Jesus walked out of the grave for you and for me and for every one of those people you're believing for, amen. So much can happen in one day. It's so important, church. Don't lose hope. Because I know for us, one day our parents are going to walk through those doors. Our sisters, our brothers, our nieces, our nephews, they're going to come to Christ. And one day your parents, your siblings, your children, listen to me, guys, this is important. They're coming, amen? Your nieces, your nephews, your friends, your neighbors, your work colleagues, whoever it is you're believing for, one day they're going to come, amen? One day they're going to come. Because 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9 says, The Lord is not slow in doing what he promised the way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with you. He does not want anyone to be lost, but he wants all people to change their hearts and lives. He's faithful, guys. One day, one day.